Hi, so you can go through the paper from 2012, looking at question 19. Okay, so in this question we thought that a loudspeaker emits sound in all directions. So you have a loudspeaker here, and a microphone here, and a screen here. And the, the, the sound waves are of wavelength lambda. The first part of the question says, if the screen's moved, we're told that when the screen moves, we record maximum and minima. And we're asked, what is the distance between positions of the screen such that maxima are recorded? I.e., what is the distance between successive maxima? Okay, so let's sketch this. We're going to have a sounding wave. The waves are going to come from the loudspeaker, hit the screen, and reflect off. So let's sketch down a standing wave. So it's something like this. It strikes the screen, and it reflects back like this. So our maxima are here and here. And what's that difference there? Well, that's clearly one half the wavelength, or lambda over two. So that's our distance. OK, now for the next part of the question, we're told that the screen is no longer moved. And we're asked, would the microphone record maximum minimum bit if we moved A, the loudspeaker, and B, the microphone? OK, so let's think about this. In A, we're moving the loudspeaker. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to have waves coming out of our loudspeaker. This is before we even move it. So it's going to come like this, strike the screen, reflect back, and come back to the loudspeaker. Now, the important thing is that we're told the loudspeaker emits waves in all directions. So we have a constant wave going like this towards the microphone. Now, what happens if we move the loudspeaker? Well, if we move the loudspeaker, this standing wave's phase is going to change, i.e. it's going to meet the loudspeaker in a different phase. So as it's moved, the phase in which the standing wave here meets the loudspeaker changes. And that means that when the loudspeaker passes through and interferes with the wave here, we're going to have a different amount of interference. But because the wave phase is constant, so it's not constant, I, it's changing as the loudspeaker moves, the amplitude of this wave is going to keep changing. So that means the microphone will record maxima and minima, because let's just to, to clarify that in, in brief, as the microphone, the loudspeaker moves across like this, the relative phase of this standing wave produced as it reaches the loudspeaker changes, and thus the phase difference between the waves produced in the loudspeaker here and the wave here interfering with it changes, and so we're going to have maxima and minima recorded. Now what about B? Right, well in B, we're told that the microphone moves. So what have we just said? We've just said that when the loudspeaker moved from here to here, there were phase changes between the standing wave meeting the loudspeaker and the wave emitted here. However, now we're told both the loudspeaker and the screen are stationary. So that means this standing wave here is constant. It's not going to be changing. So it's going to be meeting the loudspeaker at a constant phase. The phase isn't going to change. So that means it's going to be meeting this wave here produced in the loudspeaker at a constant phase. So if it has the same phase difference constantly between the wave produced here and the wave produced from here, then we're going to have a constant wave of constant amplitude across the entire wave. We have the same interference everywhere. So that means if we move the microphone within this area here, to the left of the loudspeaker, we're going to record no maximum or minimum because the amplitude is exactly the same everywhere. So that means there will be no maxima and minimum.